Hey guys, it's Eric with the Miller Park Minute, where we're throwing strikes and getting likes, hitting dingers, and getting listeners back again with another episode. It's been a two days, and I apologize. Tuesday, I woke up feeling a little sick under the weather, and I just got exhausted, and I barely made it through the Brewers game Tuesday night. Believe it or not, yeah. Uh, About noon on Tuesday, I got home and fell asleep and uh then went to the doctor got checked out got some medication Uh, i'm on the mend i'm finally feeling better last night and yesterday were just two very tired days and now here we are back at it back at talking brew crew so that being said we are back we're talking um same old places uh, so if my show doesn't air, uh, don't don't feel that it's uh, I've gone away. It's just a matter of it might be a temporary mental break. It might be illness. Uh, I try to say if I'm going to be gone, but it doesn't always happen. So uh, Apple, Amazon, iHeartRadio, CastBox, you know it, Rumble, just to name a few, back again doing videos. So um, this should be a daily show, but not always daily. So it's a one-man band. When there's not the one man that's on the show, I can't, I apologize, I can't, I can't record when I'm sick. I was out, I barely watched the Brewers game, and that is not like me. If you know me, I love the Brewers, I watch every single day, every inning, and or, (coughs) excuse me, (coughs) and or listen, see, still a little cough, um, but I try, I try for you guys. I try to put out episodes and stuff like that. Um, and I keep, I try to keep going. Uh, it's been a long season. I've done 170, 180 of these things so far. I don't know how many days we are into this year, but I feel like we're relatively close. Maybe I've missed like five to 10 days, maybe longer. I don't know. I don't know what day of the year it is. So, but I've tried to do an episode just about every day. That being said, uh let's let's get into it let's talk about it let's uh if you want to support this you can go over to miller park minute on patreon uh, patreon.com slash miller park minute you can also use the code miller park minute at SeatGeek. save twenty dollars off right now tickets are a hot commodity and you want to save some money use the code miller park minute at SeatGeek. save some money on tickets uh if you want to join us you can join down below on youtube uh, it should be coming soon to Apple, um, and we'll get in the subscription game if you want to want to play that game. Uh, we got an important series with the Phillies, but let's talk about an important series with the Cubs that we just wrapped up. Uh, so the thing that happens with these Cubs games is they are very important. They're very crucial right now, especially with the. Um, Goings on with with everything going on right now. Um, we just got off a nine game winning streak, won one against the Cubs. We then lost a pitcher's duel, Steele versus Burns. Um, not entirely Burns' fault. Really, the 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 game came down to a matter of hits, lack of hits. Um, we just couldn't get that that lack of timely hits, I guess. Runners left on. Um, and it was both sides. It was both sides. Pretty even matchup. Um, nobody's fault, unfortunately. Lack of hitting's fault, but, I mean, we still had hits. So then we go to Woody's start. Woody had another great start. Um Put up some strikeouts for sure. Struck out eight to Hendricks' is six. Uh, he went six innings, just the same as Hendricks. Hendricks actually gave up more hits than Woody. Um, Piamps Perguo got in that game, but we just couldn't get that one across. Uh, we gave up a late run. We got a late run, then we gave up a late run after that, so it really just kind of didn't work out. Uh, and that was the one where we had the um, Marcana took a ball, and I didn't know this about Marcana, but Marcana, 
apparently has a propensity for getting hit. Um, he is very good at getting hit by pitches. Um, and they mentioned that on the radio broadcast, which I thought was great. It's like, oh, that's awesome. Uh, but yeah, we just just couldn't get over that hump there. Uh, gave it up late. Well, we tied it up late, and then we gave it up after we tied it up. And we just couldn't get anything going after that. So, that being said, that was ugly. That was just ugly. Uh, still a close game, though. One-run game. We get ourselves in a lot of these one-run game situations. Uh, and that's the good and the bad. I mean, you if you listen to other podcasters and how they talk about this team, they talk about this team like it's been dog crap all season long. And that's just not the case. We're we're We've been playing good baseball. It's just been not as offensively strong. You don't be in first place at this point in the season and, and be tacking on victories without having offensively decent games. I'm not going to say perfect. Uh, and, and it's the game of baseball, so it's never going to be perfect. And I, I'm sick of that old adage that people think that we can just be perfect. Uh, it's not going to happen. So we lost two in Chicago. We keep it interesting with Chicago. We could have sealed this thing up with Chicago in the division. Um, but we did not do that today. So we still stand, as of today, three games ahead of the Chicago Cubs, six games ahead of the Cincinnati Reds, 13 and a half above Pittsburgh, and 16 and a half above the Cardinals, which is really crazy to say. So, we've got the Phillies coming in. Now, one of our other f podcasting friends, um, if you lock on to him, you'll understand, uh, basically gives these previews of these teams and talks about them like they're the, the greatest things since sliced bread. Yet they have the same record as us. So, they got Bryce Harper, sure. We got Christian Yelich. We've got talent. Um, we're going to talk about some additions that were made to the club in just a moment here. But uh, so Wheeler versus Peralta is the Friday night matchup for us, 7 10 this evening. Uh, Nola versus TBD. And then Miley. So we're going to fill in that starter. Uh, it'll be interesting to see who we fill in. Uh, where the call ups go. Obviously, we got September 1st, so the roster expands tomorrow. Uh, but we also made some moves. So the Brewers signed Josh Donaldson from the Yankees. Yes, Josh Donaldson was released. Um, so as you remember, the old days, there was there was late August trades, waiver wire, that kind of thing. Uh, no longer does that exist. So Basically, he was released, and we signed him as a fresh deal uh, to a minor league deal. Uh, he was basically uh, in his final part of his contract. Um, Thirty-seven-year-old. He's reported to. He's going to be report to AAA Nashville. And will be eligible for the Brewers postseason roster. So this is kind of a lightning in the bottle type of situation. This is Luke Foyt, Tyler Naquin any other player that we've ever signed like this. So he has not been doing well. This is just a, a, a take a chance type of move. Much like the, and I didn't cover this, I didn't talk about it because I didn't do a video uh, in the last two days, but the Angels dumped a bunch of players. Uh, the Reds actually got a couple of them, it looks like, uh, trying to make their push for the, you know, like the wild card. <clears throat> Hunter Renfro. Uh, Lucas Giolito and a couple of the other relievers, they, they just made a dump, a waiver wire dump. And it, it was more known about because it was very public. Josh Donaldson was another player. Uh, there was a couple other players that were out there that were available via this waiver wire action. So we got Donaldson. Donaldson's the guy we got. Uh, we got a couple other guys I'll talk about in just a moment. Uh, but Donaldson has been hitting 142 with 659 OPS in 34 games this year. He's been sidelined by a right calf strain since mid-July, 
wasn't in the lineup are eligible to activate it until sub- September 15th. But that resets with the move to the new organization. Milwaukee Brewers GM Matt Arnold said, the Brewers are free to call up Donaldson to the majors at any time. Certainly, you look at the pedigree of this guy and what he's accomplished in the game. I think walking in the door, he has an instant credibility and presence, Arnold said. I think it could potentially help us. Uh, asking how long Donaldson needs to be in the minors before he's on the radar for the big league roster. He hasn't been in any games in a while, so we need to get him some regular bats in Nashville. He seems to be ready to go. He wanted to assess, but we wanted to assess him physically and make sure he's good to go. Obviously, he's a competitor. I'm sure he wants to get going as soon as possible, but we always want to do that safely. So, what this move is, is them making making the plays, making the attempts. And I, I appreciate what they're doing. Um, we've had a lack of production at third base. Uh, primarily, Brian Anderson manned third base for the most part of this year. Then we brought up Monasterio. Monasterio was red hot. Red hot. Then he faded away. He's a rookie, so we'll give him that break. But Brian Anderson has not been consistent. Um, yeah. So Monasterio has been hitting 211 with a 590 OPS in 90 at bats in August. Uh, so he also has an opportunity to turn the corner. Uh, Brian Anderson has not been playing well. He's been not getting regular playing time since he's been injured. So this is just kind of one of those. Can we make it work? Will it work? Try it out. And I'm glad they're doing it. Um, they also picked up uh, minor league outfielder Chris Roller from Cleveland for cash and outfielder Greg Allen via minor league contract. Um, so these guys are all going to report to Nashville. They're, they're all guys that they could potentially add to the 40 man, which would, um, I think they have to finalize the 40 man, which is the eligibility for the playoff roster. So they don't necessarily have to be on the major league team, but they have to be on the 40 man to, to make that move. Um, and these are all just tr- Additions, you know, we're just trying to make additions to make pieces to make this team more of a contender. Matt Arnold's strategy here is not bad. It's better than we've seen. Uh, Well, last year we had a tank, so I can't compare to last year. Um, But this is better than what we what happened last year, and that's that's a start. We're we're trying to make these pieces, trying to add these guys in at the right time. Uh, we're going to see what the September call-ups bring. Uh, maybe a gasser. Um, I really think it's going to be an internal move of somebody probably we've already seen. Uh, Garrett Mitchell could get added back to this roster. Uh, Aaron Ashby. We'll see what they decide to do tomorrow. We'll talk about it tomorrow night. But this was definitely definitely a day where I didn't expect to see a former All-Star a guy who signed with the New York Yankees added to the Brewers. And, uh, yeah, it's just kind of, kind of interesting. Then of course we're talking, uh, Peralta is looking to add to his dominant, um, August Peralta was the pitcher of the month for the Brewers in August. Uh, he started to actually take over the pitching statistics. So Freddie leads now in wins with 11, uh, 177 strikeouts, which is a record. Um, doesn't have whip yet, but I mean, his ERA was like 151. Uh, Corbin Burns is still the whip leader for season overall. Uh, 355 ERA for Burns still and 31 saves for Devin. Uh, if you take a look at the batting uh, now with where everything is. Christian Yell still leads the way, 281, uh, 94 runs. Willie Adama still leading the home run chase, 
21. Christian Yelich batted, runs batted in and stolen bases. Christian Yelich is 27. So uh, the offense definitely made a tick up in the last month. Uh, good to see it. We had some a strong nine games, and let's not let's not discount that. Let's not forget where we were and where where we've been. Offense has gotten a lot better. Uh, if we take a look at the the National League leaderboard, we are. We're the third best team in the National League right now. And that's huge. That's very huge. Um, especially going in. Uh, a lot of people had, I don't know, kind of kind of discounted us, so to speak. So right now, it, it would be Milwaukee, Atlanta, Dodgers. And then if you, you open up wild card, you're going to talk, be talking Phillies, Cubs, San Fran. Now, we got the Phillies this weekend. We got the Cubs again at the end of the season. They moved the um, fan appreciation because they didn't want to do it on a night where they're going to give to a bunch of Cubs fans. Uh, I was just talking about that with my buddy today, my bobblehead guy, my guy who hooks me up. Devin this is one of my favorites so far this season. That and C Connect Burns. Uh, I'm going to get uh, Contreras, too. He looks pretty cool. So, that being said, we've got Philly. we got Pittsburgh again. we got the New York Yankees at New York. Then we come home for the Marlins for four and the Nats for three. We go to the Cardinals for four. We go to the Marlins for another three. We come back to the Cardinals, and we got the Cubs to finish it off. This could be pot potentially the making of a great finale to this season. Um, whoops along the way. The Cardinals always give us fits. Marlins will be a tough contender. Um, but those three games against the Cubs. So from, from here to the three games with the Cubs at the end of the season, we need to do our best to... Build that gap. Build that bridge. Winning series, taking series. Uh, it goes without saying that that's each and every day, but it's important. Let's talk about the scores around the league and kind of, we kind of already covered <clears throat> what's going on with the waivers and everything like that, but we'll still talk about it. Uh, right now, there is a slugfest going on out in L.A., uh, Braves currently over the Dodgers, eight to seven. Uh, bottom eight. Yankees lost three to four to the Tigers in ten. Marlins six to one over the Nats, and Giants seven to two over the Padres. So of course we're in this stage where we're going to be watching everybody. So we want to know what's going on around the league. If you got that MLB pass. Go watch, because this is where all the good baseball is going to be going on. We're down the hunt, down the chase. Um, and that's good. That's a good thing. Apologize. I'm just not fully, fully 100% yet, guys. So we'll, we'll keep it, we'll keep it, keep it light tonight. Do a little. Yeah, we're still at 20 minutes. <laughs> so some big names are injured. Uh, Bueller, J-Rod, um, Bichette, Stroman. These are all kind of names that are going to count down the stretch. Uh, we talk about our injuries. Uh, injuries have been affecting everybody. Jackson Cheerio slugged his way to a 2020 season. I don't think we're going to see him. I really don't. Um, I think it would be foolish to waste him on this year. There is an article about nine prospects that could help their teams down the stretch. Let's take a look and see who they are. There's Pete Crow Armstrong, Chicago Cub. Marco Luciano, 
Uh, San Francisco Giant, Gavin Stone, Dodger, Colton Kowser, Baltimore, Heston Churstad, Baltimore, Tyler Black. Ooh, let's see what they got to say. Uh, the Brewers have already called up highly rated prospects. Joey Weimer South really like this year. Black hasn't seemed overmatched since promotion to AAA in August, walking more than he struck out, posting a 372 OBP in 19 games for Nashville, but he's playing mostly third base at Triple A. There might not be a clear lane to the majors with Andrew Montesterio holding down the hot corner adequately in Milwaukee. That said, Black's top tools approach should translate pretty quickly to the, in the bigs. He brings defensive experience at all three infield positions to outfield spots. He could provide value to Milwaukee as a versatile bench option with some pop. Ooh, so they're saying he might. Um, that's, that's kind of contradictory to what just happened with Donaldson. I don't know. Maybe you call out Black and give him a shot. I don't know. I... I'm not too hot on burning these guys. I'm not too hot. I know everybody is pressing the button. If you go over to Twitter, they're all pressing the button. But I don't think we we press the button here. I don't think you burn this guy yet. Because what if he doesn't turn out? That's just my thought. Just my thought. But that's why I'm not paid to make those decisions. Those decisions are made by Craig Council. And Matt Arnold, not me, not the Miller Park Minute. I don't make any baseball decisions. And I'm glad because that's a lot of stress and a lot of pressure that I just, I don't know, guys. I don't think I could do it. Love to someday, but we will see. Um, yeah, well, we'll, we'll have more news tomorrow. We'll, we'll be talking about this. I'm sure there's, there's going to be call-ups. There's going to be things. Um, Rosters expand by two. So thank you for listening, watching the Miller Park Minute. We'll catch you in the next episode tomorrow evening. Uh, we'll go, we'll try and go after the game. Maybe we'll do it before the game. Just depends on how it all falls out, how the day falls. So as always, guys, go Brewers. Uh, remember to like and subscribe, share this with your friends. Um, I don't have anything to recommend you watch because I haven't done enough content to recommend you watch any of the content this week. But if you want, go back and watch some of the, the last week's videos. All right. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for supporting even when I am not physically here. So go Brew Crew. We'll catch you in the next episode, guys. We'll get them tomorrow. <laughs>